Now remember, once the transaction has been done, it is redirecting us to this uh, PHP dot here. You can see this is what it's redirecting us to. So we need to process this data. As you can see from here, it's sending this type of data here. Uh, the data that is being sent after the transaction, it will send the tracking ID, the tracking order tracking ID and the merchant reference id so this is the merchant reference id and you can see from this from this uh from this documentation with the documentation here after you have done the submit uh order request endpoint the next thing that you need to do you need to do the check transaction so in order to know that if the transaction is okay or if it is not so this is how you can check the transaction status so checking the transaction status uh, here uh, it have uh, done it in the response page so this is where it will check the transaction status and you can see from the documentation it states that in order to check a transaction status you will use the order ID and the order ID should be set there so it will it will use the get method so you can see from here this is how you check the, the transaction ID here so you'll get this uh, check order ID here this is the check order ID I will use it to get it via get method so this is the get method ID and then I'll get this transaction ID so from here this is how you do it then here you can echo the response here so you can echo here the response so getting the response here you echo the response once you get the transaction id then you replace it here on the url so let us now test it one more time with the transaction id let me echo that uh, comment this then you need also the access token because you need it it's an api you are consuming it to that and uh, here let me come back here again let me come back here at um, come back here at this local host local host then i will write principal so that we can see again how we can trigger the payment then it will be processed on the response id then let me just do this mm, let me see first if the ng rock is okay the ng rock is okay or it's it has changed ng rock because we need it that so that we can okay it will echo the response id i think it's the same let me just respo uh, rep uh, do this we'll put it there this is the response id then also remember that in the registered ipn you need also to register register ipn just type in i will replace it just to be sure it's okay because uh, ng rock sometimes it be it misbehaves itself especially if you're not in the premium version so let's do the uh, here the checker id then i will enter the pin and see if it will process our data so let me cancel also cancel this then i'll come here to pass up the api then click submit when i click submit when I click submit, it will reload. Then it will take us to the URL that has been generated, re re redirect to URL. Then I'll just click proceed. Then an SDK push will appear on my phone. So let's wait it. Here it has appeared. Then I will enter just my pin. When I enter my pin, as it loads, let it first load. When I enter my pin, and then leave it as that i will not uh, uh, click anything it will re automatically redirect itself that the payment is successful and all the data is there it has been sent to our api and then let it to wait it to load it will show it will take it to that i don't know why it's showing this so refresh this page so refresh this page what i will do again i will come back here and uh, copy this instead of using ng rock i will use i will use what instead of using ng rock or instead of using ng rock 
I will use this. Instead of using ng rock, this is what I will use. I'll use this exactly this page. And copy this. So I'll use that page, the exact page here. Then let me set this to like uh, 15 shillings. Let me set it to 15 shillings so that we can get that transaction, the right transaction. Uh, then I'll just leave it as that. So I pin and that. So this is the page that it will redirect itself after that. So let me come and reload this. Then order a request again. So let me set this first. Order request again. So submit a request. And after submitting a request, I will wait it. I will wait it. Let me submit a request. Then wait it to generate. Then that's there. Then I'll just click submit. When I click submit, it will do this. I click submit to do that. Then I will enter the pin. Mpesa pin and I'll do that. After I've entered the Mpesa pin, I've received a message that I've paid to PesaPal. Then let's wait it to automatically reload itself. So it has automatically reload itself. Then we will let this just wait for this bar to fill here. Then it will take us to the page that is processing our request. Let's wait it. There it is and now you can see that we have gotten this because we have done this uh, this URL here that we have gotten the access here. Uh, if we have gotten this then we have echoed this response. So here you can do with this data to check if it is successful. You can see the transaction status is complete. So you can get this transaction status. This transaction status you can just do this. Uh, data then you can decode uh, this response then we decode response when you decode response you can decode the response here you can just write here the transaction data description then you will get that transaction data description so when the transaction status description is complete it means that the transaction has been complete and from the documentation with the documentation so let me click here from the documentation here let's go to the uh, to the document 3 so that we can see here next then next uh, then I will click next so here next so this is the page and you can see here at check transaction status you can see from here the check transaction status that when you get a uh, complete it means that is there uh, when you get complete it means that has been completed when you get fail then you can get reverse then you can get that so you can see from there we have already consumed the api here where you can collect uh, the payment via this then you can use this to check or if the transaction has been complete or you can also do this here you can remember that we set the ipn and you can see from this we are getting all the ipn data which here you can use you can get the transaction id from here you can get here the transaction id from here so then you can just come here and uh, check it depends you can use the ipn to check if the transaction is successful or you can just use this the response page in order to get if the transaction is complete or not so if you are new and you like such kind of content please subscribe and hit that notification bell so i think i'm going to do an extra mile where i will show you on how you to integrate it live on on this uh how to integrate it live on uh, 
uh, how to integrate it live on a form or on some application so see you in the next video